and law and accountability expert Dr. Tracy A. A. Pearson is joining us live on the phone to speak more about the Rittenhouse case. Dr. Pearson, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Pearson, can you break down the charges that Kyle Rittenhouse is currently facing? Sure. Um, the, the charges break down uh, amongst three victims um, and are in total about five felony counts plus uh, a couple lesser included felony offenses that the jury can consider. Um, <clears throat> primarily what we're dealing with here are various levels of uh, homicide, so the, the killing of a human being um, and uh, endangering uh, the safety of others. Um, and within the, the charges of, of homicide, um, we're talking about whether the behavior or the conduct was intentional or whether it was reckless um, or reckless disregard for human life. And this trial broke tradition by allowing Rittenhouse to have a hand in choosing his jurors randomly. Do you think that this will have an effect on the trial? You know, I, I don't. I, don't. Um, I think that, uh, you know, in, in looking at the history of, of the, that approach, I know that the judge has said that, that he has done this regularly. There, there are lawyers out there who have practiced in front of this judge that are saying that this is an unusual event. Um, but it, it, I don't think it has any real bearing on uh, the jurors deciding the case, all of the jurors sat through and, and heard all of the testimony. And so um, how, how those folks were picked, I really don't think that that, that has any bearing on the outcome of, of their decision. And then to break down the jury a little bit more, there are seven women. Do you think that gender could impact the verdi- verdict of this case? Um, I think that when you're looking at, at, at deciding any case, um, People have implicit bias, and it can go either way. Um, I know that, that during the testimony, um, several jurors were upset by the uh, photographs of uh, the injuries sustained by, um, one, the surviving uh, victim, and, and also of, of the dead body of Mr. Rosenbaum, who was the first uh, person who, who was killed. Um, so I think that, that women could see... Um, could see it both ways. I think they could look at a baby-faced kid sitting at a table um, and and have uh, a feeling of of, um, empathy and sadness for him. But I also think that um, folks sitting in that jury could 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 look at those other people as as being the child of someone as well and and being very upset with with what transpired here. So I, I don't think that you can really um, you know, pick apart, you know, one identity category that someone identifies with and, and, and have that be a predictor of what a jury is going to decide. And Kyle Rittenhouse was released from a juvenile facility while awaiting his trial on a $2 million bond. What impact do you think that public support of Rittenhouse, such as from the far right group, the Proud Boys, could have on this trial and following the trial? You know, the, the jury wasn't sequestered, and, and I, you know, I have some opinions about sequestration. I think sometimes it can backfire because juries make decisions based on, on uh, you know, wanting to get out of their own captivity um, more quickly if you put them in sequestration, and the judge has to deal with more um, complaints about quality of life, which can hamper the process. Um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, there, there is exposure uh, that the jury has two outside views and uh, to the commentary that's in the news. Now, they're not supposed to consider that stuff. They're supposed to consider only the evidence, and the evidence is applied to the law that the judge instructed them on. Um, I, I am concerned about the, the hostile forces, um, you know, that are sort of uh, gathering around, you know, this, this upcoming decision and and how those clashes are going to occur. I am concerned for the community. Um, But, you know, as far as as the decision-making, again, you know, trying to figure out what a jury is going to do, I would would have better luck picking winning lottery tickets. Um, You know, folks, one of my job that I, I someday want to have in my future life is to be a jury consultant because you can always be wrong and still get paid. Um, 
juries are made up of people and people are human beings, obviously, and they are messy and uh, they are not predictable. Um, I don't care what anybody says. Um, you know, if they come back fast, people say that it means, you know, that, that it's going to be, you know, an acquittal or a conviction, depending on what side you're on. And the same goes for people who have taken a long period of time to try to understand the evidence. Um, I do know that they did ask to see some evidence again. So we know that they are considering uh, the circumstances. And I think that one of the pieces of evidence they asked to consider was uh, a video. So what did it show? And one of the key facts in this case is uh, the, um, is, is, you know, was there, or not key fact, but one of the key allegations is that, uh, that the first victim, Mr. Rosenbaum, um, wasn't, within, um, wasn't within reaching distance of the gun, um, which has a, uh, a or weapon really, um, which has a, has an impact on whether uh, the defendant can, can make a claim of self-defense. And moving us a bit beyond the jury, beyond discussions of a verdict, this could be a landmark case for self-defense. What are the limits to claims like this? Uh, self-defense is tough, and, and it's one of those, those things in uh, that vary by state. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin, um, the defendant does not have to prove self-defense what they have to do is establish one element of it um and in order to have a viable um to be able to viably assert it and then the prosecution has to be able to disprove one element of self-defense um so you know it's 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 a very fact specific determination so it's not something that you can look at other cases to try to get uh, some sense of what might happen here um, you know, the limitations on, on self-defense are that you're allowed to, to use um, threatened or intentional use of force to protect yourself, um, and it's to protect yourself from unlawful interference. Um, and you can only use enough force to, to stop or prevent that, and um, you, you, you have to make efforts to try to get away um, if, in fact, you have provoked the situation. So there are, there are a lot of moving parts to this. Did uh, the defendant show up and provoke uh, the circumstances that brought about uh, the conduct that, that led to the death of these people? Um, and, and, you know, is it viable for him to assert uh, self-defense under those circumstances? When you provoke, generally no. Um, and the only time that that changes is if, is if uh, you take yourself out of the situation that you've provoked and then come, in essence, come back. It's sort of like clearing a basketball during a basketball game. You leave, you come back. Um, and so uh, under these circumstances, that's not what happened. I mean, you know, based on the testimony and the information that's been brought forward, uh, shots were fired. Um, the question of whether the gun was reached for is, is, is certainly a question here. Uh, you know, if you're a law enforcement officer and somebody reaches for your gun, it's wrong. But when you are an average citizen walking around, you have a right to, may have a right to bear arms in that particular jurisdiction, but it, it doesn't mean you should. Um, and, it, and you certainly, context matters. Uh, you know, a 17-year-old kid coming in from out of state to a jurisdiction in which he doesn't live in to purportedly protect a community that isn't his, um, and then firing, you know, a weapon at someone and firing a, a, what the prosecutors are calling a kill shot to that man's back and then leaving him face down for dead. Um, I don't know that that's a self-defense claim, but, you know, it depends on, 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 you know, what your political leanings are and how you feel about guns, I think, to determine, you know, in your own mind about whether it was viable for him to claim self-defense. Well, Dr. Pearson, this has been an incredibly informative interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.